Hey everybody, we are still talking about how to homeschool without curriculum. If you haven't watched the first video, go back and watch that part one because it's important that you start this journey or at least start considering this journey with that foundation in store. So you need to rewind and go back. Do I have my master homeschool goals? Check. Once you're there, then you're ready to, to kind of move on to this stage. Once you know what the end of the rainbow looks like, right? You know that you want your kids to have foundational math skills, reading skills, communication skills, et cetera. But then you start to go, okay, but it's Tuesday. What do I teach on Tuesday? <laughs> right? Okay, so what you're looking for in the lower grades. So think about kids preschool till about fifth grade sometimes sixth or seventh grade, but those foundational elementary school years, that's where you need to lean into the concrete skills that kids need to learn. You know, reading, holding a pencil, writing legibly, that kind of stuff. The reading, the writing, and the arithmetic. But what, what do they need to know at that age? These are called benchmarks. And <laughs> again, your child lined up next to my child at the same age, lined up next to the kid down the street at the same age, they're going to developmentally hit different benchmarks at different ages and stages. Please know that that is okay. It's not a race. There is no such thing as being behind in homeschool. The only behind in homeschool is the one that you're sitting on, right? That's it. Because your kids just are where they are. My youngest son didn't read until he was 10. Now, the benchmarks for learning, sorry, my screen is backward, would have told me that I had failed as an educator because he didn't read until he was 10. But I knew differently. See, my master homeschool goal is not that he reads by the time that he was five, but that he falls in love with learning falls in love with reading, falls in love with story. So instead of concentrating or focusing on teaching him to read, we marinated him in story instead. So all of us read aloud to him. I even created my own read aloud books. Remember in the old days where you would check out the book in the bag from the library and it would have the little cassette tape in it. And so you'd put the cassette tape into the tape recorder, you'd press play, and the, you'd start flipping through the pages in the book. And when you get to the point where you needed to turn a page, it would go ding, right? And you turn the page. So my youngest son and I sat together with a tape recorder and we made read alouds of his favorite books. And we used big Ziploc bags and we put the book inside Ziploc bags. And we did use a cassette tape. And then we even got fancy and used um, a smartphone at the end. And so we sat side by side and he was in charge of making the ding or the boop or whatever sound he decided to make for the story. It was beautiful. So the benchmarks themselves are ideas of a skill that a child needs to master or should master, or maybe kind of sort of maybe think about mastering with a guided age or stage bracket of when they should be able to do that thing. But they're not how you measure success in high school. So there's benchmarks. So how do you find these? Because this is key if you're not going to use curriculum. You still need to know, well, well, what are the basic math skills, Becky? Um, I know that adding and subtracting, multiplying and dividing, but I would have never thought of decimals or I would never would have thought of percentages or measurements you know, in metrics or whatever it is. So benchmarks, you can actually Google state standards and you can look at the, so you pick your grade wherever your kid is and you look at the state standards for math and English. Don't panic, I did this for you already, okay? Um, but you can look at the state standards and you can pick them apart and you can go, okay, they're saying that my child should do this at that grade. All it is is a guideline. Okay, don't panic about when it should happen. Just decide for yourself 
whether it's part of what you want your child to learn. So once you know the, the 12 concepts that your child needs to know in mathematics, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, we're going to go back to that. You know that they need to know that. So just talk about addition for a second. In order to master addition, your child needs to count. They need to skip count. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 5, 10, 15, 20. They need to be able to write their numbers. They need to be able to represent a number with an object. This is a number one using a finger. This is one phone. This is one pencil, etc. So there's that kind of stuff. You can also represent numbers with tally marks or with words written out, right? So there's a different way. So just looking at numbers. Now, when you look at numbers in general, those are typically elementary school things that you're going to be doing with your child. You're going to be teaching them their numbers, how to say them, how to spell them, how to form them. You don't need a curriculum to do that. You need toys. You need rocks. You need sticks. You need sidewalk chalk, finger paint, crayons, um, rolls at the grocery store, butterflies that are flitting by. One, two, three, four, five. Don't get hung up on how you teach it. Just use what you have around you to teach them. So benchmarks, they can be overwhelming. Now, I homeschooled for about 15 years, I think, before I started writing curriculum and activities for my own kids and started selling them and all that stuff. And I remember one year I was part of a charter school and the whole common core started to come down the chute. Now, don't panic. So common core. Everybody was freaking out about common core. So as a school, I was kind of part of the parent committee behind the scenes to look at things. And we were get, getting a um, giving our two cents about what we thought. So I got a copy of the common core standards and I read them. They read just like a homeschool mom like me wrote them. Okay, so here's the deal with Common Core. The standards for Common Core, and I'm not Common Core pro or con, but the way that the, the way that they rewrote the benchmarks of what kids should learn is that they wrote they wrote them in a way that kids would approach a subject from different perspectives. So with math, if they were learning numbers, they would also be reading a book about numbers and baking and doing physical activities outside, as well as counting and writing and doing addition. That's kind of what Common Core was. That's what the standards, that's what the benchmark, the skeleton is. The reason it became a disaster is that all the curriculum writers across the planet started to write their own common core without knowing what the benchmarks were. And so it became this disaster of labeling things common core. And it was just, a it was a disaster. But I remember reading the standards and I remember looking at them going, gosh, this, this makes a lot of sense to be teaching about, um, history and then to use that as the benchmark for where you pull your vocabulary or your spelling or whatever it is that your science activities. So what I did is I went behind the scenes and you don't need that yet. I went behind the scenes and I looked up the state standards for kindergarten and I started to write them into statements of I can teach. I can teach my child to do this thing. I can teach my child to do that thing. And I broke them up by grade, kindergarten through fifth grade, into math and writing, et cetera. Because once you have the understanding of these are the skills that my child needs to learn, now you can look through your life and you can go, oh, this, this, totally, this totally checks that off. You know, you can teach your kids how to count without ever opening a workbook, 
right? You don't you don't need you don't need to pay twenty nine ninety five for a workbook to teach your your child how to count. It's the same with adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing. Oh, somewhere between second grade and seventh grade, the math gets confusing. Not the math itself, but the curriculum gets confusing because the people that wrote it didn't do it in a way that makes it really fun and user friendly. So what I created were these benchmarks for learning and I call them I can teach. And so they are, let's see, they look like this. Let me open up the page where they're individual sheets that'll have language like I, whoops, where'd the one go? So this one is, bro this is kindergarten and it's broken up into language skills, reading skills, writing skills, listening skills. And then there's math skills that have to do with all the different things that they should be learning. They're not set in stone and you don't have to follow them a hundred percent. And there is a master bundle. So you don't have to buy them kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, etc. You can get the whole kit and get it for much less. But they're not free <laughs> because there's a lot of sweat and tears into them. It it took a lot to go through and to comb them down and to establish what those benchmarks were. You know, by the time I was teaching my own kids and I was writing the benchmarks for the I can teach my child my kids were older. So I had already kind of navigated through the confusing stage of, well, what is it that I should actually teach my child? And one of the, one of my secret tips for just talk math for a second. And I keep bringing up math because it's black and white and it's kind of the easiest subject to understand this whole idea about benchmarks. Grab your child's mathematics book wherever it is, no matter what grade they are in right now. And you open up the book to the table of contents, okay? There are likely between 12 and 16 chapters in that math book. I want you to look at each of those chapters and I want you to think about your school year. If you do a traditional school year, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May. Okay, so that's eight. If there are 16 chapters, that means two chapters a month, right? Basic math. So now look at those things. It might say things like adding single digit numbers. Do you know how to do that? Then you don't need a book to teach your type. Do they know how to do it? Then they don't need to do that chapter. So I started this idea of what are the benchmarks for learning by going through the table of contents in all of my kids' books. And I first would ask myself, do I personally know how to do this skill? Because if I knew how to do it, then, and I knew that I was confident in it, then I could translate that to my child in a way that I could ex explain it to them and teach them that concept. And then if I got stuck, I used the curriculum as a backup, as a resource to teach me so that I could teach my child. And so that's what I would recommend is that you start, even if you don't get the, the I can teach my child benchmarks, um, that you use any book that you're using to teach your child um, use it from the table of contents and then decide, do I have the skills how to do this? So benchmarks, they're the secret second step of homeschooling without curriculum because you have your long-term goals. You know you're going to teach your child how to add. You have benchmark goals. By the time you can look at elementary school goals and you can see that by the time they get through, depends on how fast they go, but third, fourth grade, they're adding and subtracting single digit, double digit, triple digit, and bigger numbers. And so do you really need a curriculum to teach them how to do that? I, I would say no. But then you put that skill right in the middle of kind of a circle. See the, 
the pie graph behind me back there. So you'd put that skill right in the middle and then you'd find different ways to do it, maybe with blocks or with cooking or drawing or sidewalk chalk, picture books, etc. So how do you homeschool without curriculum? You understand your goals and you understand those basic benchmarks for learning. They really apply for the younger grades because you want your kids to know how to read and to love to read, to know how to do their basic math and to learn to communicate on paper and orally, right? These are, these are things that we know that we want our kids to do. So in the next video, we're going to talk about what you do with those benchmarks. How, what, what do you lay upon the benchmarks and teach your children if you don't use a box curriculum? Are you ready? I'll see you in the next video.